Hi everybody, welcome back to the Tetrix RoboBench video series. This is Tim and Tammy, TNT, in case you forget. Uh, we are working our way through uh, the Pulse uh, programming guide and we've done all the way up to activity seven. We're ready for activity eight. So tell me what that one's gonna be about. All right, in this one, we're using a similar program to what we had in activity seven. So you're gonna be driving in a circle. So uh, we are just gonna be changing how the robot acts and it's gonna drive in a circle, hopefully a full circle for you in this example. So first thing you need to do is we need to go open the program okay. so we can open our example for activity eight. I can do that just because I'm a good helper. All right, and now we still see again the invert motor block so that way our motor's gonna be going in the same direction together. And then we have the set motor powers, but instead of both motors going at the same power, we see one motor is going at 100% and the other motor is going at 50. So this will allow for it to turn and continually turn in that circle. And it will continue going in a circle uh, until you press the red button to stop the program from running on the robot because we don't actually have the pulse end on the program. So it's gonna just do it in a continual loop. We don't have any delays. We just got the one block. This is the simplest program we've done yet, right? Yes. Awesome. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, click on the download button and see if it goes ahead and gives us the message that it's sending data. And I see some lights, that's right. a good sign. And so we should have a signal that's successfully uploaded. So we're ready to unplug it. And put her on the floor and try it. All right, ready? we're ready to go. Let's do that. We just executed the, the program and did it do what we wanted it to do? Yeah, we got to see it go in a circle. It didn't awesome. do a perfect circle, but we got to see it. Now, another way that you could take this now that you've seen how it's executed that circle is you can try to make it do a bigger circle. So see if it can have a bigger radius or even do a smaller circle and have a smaller radius. Maybe so even how, try how, a figure eight. Yeah, how would we do that? We would just change the values here, right? Right, and maybe set um, different values for the powers of the motors. Create a different ratio between how fast one is moving in relation right. to the other one, right? Cool. Right. So what's the extension of that? Where would they take this? Uh, or let's start with, what's the real world connection with this? Let's talk about that first. Okay, so let's think of things that have to rotate in a circle automatically. Well, sprinklers. So you probably have driven by a golf course, seeing those automatic sprinklers going. They rotate around in 360 degrees, making sure they're getting the water everywhere. That's an example of turning in a circle. Awesome. Okay. And um, how about where we would actually take it with uh, in the programming? We would just change the that You said that. You changed the diameter, uh, trying to and create different, um, different values there. How's the surface going to react to this? Because you mentioned in driving forward that right. we would see different behaviors yeah. or outcomes based on the, the um, surface that it's on. Is that going to be the same here? Yes, same thing. So just make sure on a smooth surface that will give you the best results in your programming. Awesome. So that was activity eight. And now we're ready to move on to nine. So come back and see us.